This week's Nifty Gifties on F5 Live Refreshing Technology is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Whether you're looking for a new laptop, tablet, Xbox, games, or a whole lot more, you can get them at the Microsoft Store. Remember, current students, faculty, parents, and active military can save up to 10% off almost everything. To browse the products and learn more about the discounts, you can go to f5live.tv slash Microsoft. All right. This week, an interesting Twitter thread uh, started a conversation that was not the initial purpose of the thread, but or maybe not a thread, but certainly a series of tweets that weren't directly related. Um, the, the conversation went a different direction, and a direction that I find way more interesting than the original uh, set of tweets. Uh, Elon Musk um, was complaining that there might be a possibility that Apple was going to uh, remove Twitter from the App Store. And then he also made a comment that Twitter Blue would not be returning as an option until the 30% Apple tax uh, was that there was a way to get around it. Um, the first part, I'm not nearly as interested in. Uh, Musk went to, to Apple HQ, hung out with Tim Cook. They had a conversation. It was a misunderstanding. Great. Whatever. Moving on. Now, the, the other part about, uh, about Twitter Blue is the thing that got interesting. Um, because basically he said 30% is too much, uh, won't do it. If there's a problem, maybe I'll make a phone and then whatever. Then the responses <laughs> were what I thought was interesting because other companies, um, joined in to the conversation. Um, for example, we had, um, we had Spotify, the CEO of Spotify joined in um, and essentially bumped a link to a blog post that was written f over four years ago um, about this exact topic. Um, Epic, very smart, kept their mouth shut. Because um, <laughs> unlike some other people uh, this week, they listened to their lawyers. So, shh. Um, However, uh, Coinbase also made a comment um, because they just had an update to their app rejected by Apple, already in Google Play. Uh, you can already use use uh, some the, the new stuff over there, uh, but on iOS, Apple is requiring them to remove the ability to send NFTs from wallet to wallet on iOS. Why, you may ask? Because that's a weird thing. Well, because there's a gas fee involved in transferring an NFT from wallet to wallet. That fee is paid directly through the walleting system. And Apple doesn't like that. They have demanded that Coinbase uh, make a technical change that blockchain does not allow, or they can't have this feature on their app um and they and several other companies were kind of poking it at musk saying so about that phone <laughs> uh definitely an interesting turn of events right this isn't that wasn't what i was expecting because you know uh, musk goes on these on these tweet storms he gets onto a onto a topic he puts out five, six, eight, ten tweets about a topic, and then he goes quiet for a while. Um, and usually people are like, okay, shh. And they just... But but this one, like, got corporations riled up, which which I think is interesting, and it br brings back a topic that we've talked about uh, a number of times, and one that he's never had to deal with in the past, and as soon as he does, he's like, no, no, no this isn't going to work. What... Yeah, I mean, look, Musk's uh, been doing a lot of attention seeking. Always. Uh, I His mean, whole career. You know, 
the whole thing you could argue is a desperate cry for attention um, sure. that he didn't need because this whole uh, Twitter premise is not make any business sense for him to buy and does not make any business sense in the way in which he has run it the last since he took over. So there's no, you know, of course we should also point out that uh, just because thing that uh, just because people are, are business people and, and have a lot of money does not mean that they operate in a logical and rational way. Very um, true. And, and I'm sure that uh, Musk is not the only person or the only business that, that acts that way but the um but but nevertheless like i mean okay so he wants to this is another way for him to get attention for himself sure. he's trying to get it to get some kind of a better deal for himself and he's also trying to head off like i don't know if apple ever threatened uh that threaten them or not with being removed from the app store, but they Tim, do have some things going on there that Tim could Cook, get them removed. Tim Cook said that that was never on the table. Uh, it was a misunderstanding. And when Elon Musk walked away, he tweeted that he understood the miscommunication and that's all that it was. So that, I mean, that's for somebody like Musk, that's a pretty big admission. Yeah, I mean, my sense of it is that, I mean, maybe he's trying to head Apple off at the pass here in a PR push because Twitter did just, does not, I mean, please correct me, but doesn't Apple have some rules regarding moderation of content or regarding hate speech or things like that? So Apple has some interesting rules for sure. Um, user generated content, those rules get a little murky though. So, hmm. uh, um, it was, it was what Verizon tried to use to justify the changes to Tumblr, uh, which essentially never fully went into effect. Um, and Tumblr's still there and still, you know in the, the top list of, of apps. Um, and the stuff that happens on Tumblr is sometimes absolutely bonkers. Um, so <sighs> when it comes to user generated content, their rules get a little murky. Um, and it comes down to subjection a little bit. So, I mean, look, obviously I wouldn't be surprised if Apple has a different set of rules for Twitter than it has for, even uh, Tumblr. I don't know what a, yeah, for a smaller social network. Uh, uh, so, what what's the, what's the the new one that just became really popular? Uh, Hive is that Press Hive? What isn't there another one called Press? Yeah, that, and and of course Mastodon, but that's been around forever. Just nobody cared yeah. until recently. I haven't tried these yet. I really got to try them. But so, um, so Hive, you may not be able to try. I don't know. Oh no, there's a wait list, right? No. So a security researcher discovered a huge uh, hole in their API, and they shut the service down while they fixed it. In fairness, yeah. Hive is built and maintained by two people. <laughs> so uh, that's why they they just took it down. They fixed it apparently over just the last couple of days, and they've got it all back up and running. So good on them. See, that's the thing is though a speaking from experience here a a um, piece of whatever service that's run by two people is probably run much more efficiently than one that's run with with hundreds or thousands of engineers because it's probably just like oh there's a bug okay I'll just fix it Not I know where like it is got to go through a, a bureaucracy right. Yeah. Uh, so, however, so, in fairness, know. some of that bureaucracy is in response to, uh, to AT&T thinking the exact same thing and, uh, managing to knock out, uh, long distance calls to like 37,000, uh, customers. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, point, point, point being that like, 
it would be quite a move, quite a controversial move that Apple would not want to get involved in. To take down uh, to a, like a top 10 app. Yeah, to take down Twitter. That would be a really big statement. On the other hand, so on the other hand, uh, recall that I don't know if it was la- this week or last week, but sometime in the last two weeks or so, uh, Musk let back on a whole bunch of people who were banned for, 60, uh, for hate speech. So that is, you know, that it may not be uh something that apple likes likes to see you it's, know it's true especially like when you when you look at some of the people now some of them totally agree probably should be gone um some of them though jordan peterson he's an oddball but <laughs> i don't know that he's hateful i, I mean yeah I, I i like i don't have the list of who they let on let Ike on or whatever but you know, they definitely let on some people who were, you know, really mm-hmm. <laughs> hate mongers uh, now and had been kicked off for a reason. And and I should point out that uh, Musk has banned a whole bunch of people from Twitter because they said things about him that he did not like. So this is not exactly. Um, so to the this best is, of. To the best of my knowledge, not a single ban has been put in place, uh, but there have been suspensions. Since he took over, I don't believe anybody has been banned, but there have been a lot of suspensions. What about Kathy Griffin? Wasn't she banned? No, nope, she's back. Oh, she's back? Okay. Yeah, I think she had a six-day suspension or something like that. It may not oh, even been that long. Right. But yeah, no, she's back. I got uh... Okay. I don't, I one don't of the know problems, all of the... one of the problems with with Twitter, and I've heard a lot of people who have gone through suspensions on Twitter um, complain about this. There is no visual differentiation between a suspension and a uh, and a ban, and there's no direct way for the person receiving it to know exactly what it is. And sometimes they don't even tell you how long it's going to be for. Ah, so, so yeah, I mean. <laughs> Maybe they, maybe I heard somebody was banned and they weren't actually totally banned, but because they didn't know, yeah. maybe there was no number in the yeah. email that came to them. They're like, "Oh, I guess I've been banned," and it turns out, no, it was a six day suspension or whatever. Because yeah. well, because apparently their moderation tools are bad. Yeah. Well, and then you know, obviously there was a lot of news this week about Ye about. Do we call him Ye or do we call him Kanye? Uh, uh, it's actually Ye. Oh yay! I'm sorry. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Do we call him yay? Okay. About you can call him whatever you want. Uh, okay. Uh, yay's, you know, anti-Semitic posts. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. and he he was let back on after having already done a bunch of posts like that. So, yep. I mean, if forgetting putting aside what I think of those posts and who should be banned, like. Apple, Apple's, Apple doesn't like it. So I can see that he's trying to create, you know, yeah, some pressure on political pressure or whatever media pressure on Apple not to take action against Twitter because they don't, you know, they don't want Apple. Apple is like, a, as far as I can see, Apple's a very quintessential logical corporation. They do not want to offend anyone. Like Apple wants m- to make money. Apple does not have. They don't you, you want. Agree? They don't want to offend the people who will act on the offense. Oh, okay. I mean, my my sense is they don't want to like. They don't want to be seen as taking like taking much of a you know political position. They don't want to be seen as like you know being for or against anything uh that's controversial they just want to they just want to make you know what's controversial is how they want to make money and how they want to to have a walled garden and control things but you know what is that yeah as far as they don't want to alienate consumers right and so if musk is going to turn it into a cause if Twitter is banned, then they don't want to ban Twitter because they don't want 
they don't want that kind of publicity. True, true. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Because not everybody responds uh, commercially to to an offense, right? Um, so those are the people that they're not all that worried about. They're worried about people who will respond to to being offended by something. And they know that this would be... Interestingly, both groups have have a percentage, right, out there that respond real hard commercially <laughs> to, to certain things. And they're trying to find that, that middle ground, I think, so that they don't offend. Uh, ideally... Not, not nobody, but at the very least, not enough people that it will change any kind of sales. So right, yeah. I mean, they they're just in business to make money. Whatever yeah. you know, Tim Cook thinks in his you know private time or whatever uh, in his private life, he he wants Apple to just be like, okay, Apple's. I don't want to to do anything that would interfere with us selling selling any selling product. Um, well, and, and making, and having the least amount of expenses and having the most amount of profit. Right. Yeah. So they'll, that's, they'll, they'll make statements. They'll take stands on things, but only when they don't think it's going to negatively affect the bottom line. That's the, that's the key for them. It's, it's always about the bottom line. Everything they do is always about the bottom line. Uh, if, if they and, make, and I have, if they make a decision to do yeah. something, they they either very strongly believe or know for a fact that it will have a neutral or positive effect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas what Musk did is not gonna is not gonna have a positive effect on the bottom line. Uh, inviting back, you know, inviting back the guy who runs the Daily Stormer website to Twitter is not a way to court. Uh, the advertisers that um, to court the advertisers that Twitter needs. Like they're frankly, if you were an advertiser, why would you advertise on Twitter? What, what, like it was bad enough before Musk took over because it's user generated. Con- advertisers don't like user generated content when it's moderated. True. They, they, it's too unpredictable. It's not brand True. safe enough. So now you're saying we're really not brand safe. And our and our brand is not brand and our whole brand is not brand safe anymore, because I put because the guy, the CEO is putting up like kind of some like somewhat pornographic pictures himself uh, on his Twitter feed. So like I, I it's hard for me to believe that like that a series that an advertiser unless they feel like they owe Musk is a personal friend or owe him something personally. Uh, or doing business with one of his other businesses and therefore want to uh, stay on his good side would want to advertise there because first of all, ever in a, in a, a challenging economy, marketing dollars are the first thing to go. Absolutely. And then, and so this is not a good time to annoy advertisers. Second of all, why to advertise like they don't need Twitter. There's a million places that you could advertise that you can get just as targeted, if not more targeted, um, uh stuff True. uh True. placements so you could use google you could use a bunch and, of ad networks and why know, would you be on twitter and we know that facebook for example takes down isis material and twitter never has so i i don't i don't see how like there's so many other places that you could advertise mm-hmm. that, and the cost of ads is probably going down right now because so it's really hard for me to believe that like, why would they bother? Like why, why, why would even one advertiser bother with this? It's not, it's not worth it. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. Uh, I, last question. Do you think if things go sideways with Apple, he launches a phone? Um, I think he would tease people that he's going to launch a phone. Uh, I think it's theoretically and, possible. And use that, use that as some sort of leverage to keep it from going sideways with Apple. I mean, he doesn't know a lot about phones. I don't think that a whatever you 
a Musk phone or whatever, an Elon phone is going to uh, is going to do well. Theoretically, he could get someone to create, um, you know, a phone based on open source software or based on Android or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's and I'm sure that he would not start his own phone factory. He would probably just pay an ODM to make it for him. Right, to white label so, something. So sure, so sure he could do that. Facebook had a phone. Remember Facebook had a phone for a little while? It was actually uh, HTC, right? Yeah. But it had a physical so, Facebook button on it. It did, yeah, there you go. So like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, I don't think... Uh, Apple or Google or Samsung or even OnePlus uh, are uh, shake, quaking in their boots over the idea that uh, Elon yeah. Musk might try to get into the phone business. Yeah, totally agreed. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of F5 Live Refreshing Technology. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel down below, and of course hit the notification bell because we know that subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, If you've got topics that you'd like us to talk about in the future, please uh, comment them down below. And if you'd like to not follow us on YouTube, there's lots of ways that you can follow along with our content by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all of the ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.